Welcome to this SCORE webinar. Uh, this is the first in a series on ownership design uh, provided through SCORE Mentors Green Bay. So let's talk about what co-ops are. So co-ops are this funny thing in that everyone has heard of the word co-op, uh, but most people can't define what it is. So you can see the stats here. Strangely, 76% of people would rather buy from a co-op. They know it's an alternative to traditional winner-takes-all economics, but what is it? 89% of people can't tell you what it actually means, right? So it's a weird thing. I think we just got to acknowledge that. Um, so let's talk about what it is. So as Lori said, it's a business owned and governed by its direct participants. And why is that important? Well, in most of our economy, you have entities where the owners and the investors are all on one side and the people supporting the business are on the other. And as many of us know, sometimes those interests are really different, right? People over here might be making a lot of money. People over here might not be making much at all or might not have much say. And all we're trying to do is bring the Venn diagram together and say, what if the people who support the business actually own the business? Now, where it gets complicated, and Shantae will explain it, is that co-ops can happen on any level of the supply chain. Um, so, but that, at the end of the day, that's what it is. It's owned and governed by its, by its people. It's also a way of working together. And uh, to Lori's question about, is it a way to incorporate? Is it different than an LLC or a corporation? It's not always different. So there's a ton of co-ops that actually are incorporated as LLCs or corporations. Sometimes people do choose to incorporate at the state level as a co-op, but you don't have to. Um, and finally, there's a federal tax benefit that reduces double taxation for people that are operating on a cooperative basis. So that's kind of a, a neat perk if you want to look at that. So what is a co-op? Shantae, give us some examples. So if you take a moment, and thank you, Greg, um, just look at the logos right now, right? Do you recognize any one of them, two of them, or maybe three of them? The thing about when talking about co-ops, we think about the types of co-ops. And I just want to point out, because we were very excited about this, that if you are calling in from Wisconsin, there are a few on here based in Wisconsin, like the Credit Union, Capital, Edge. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now you're like, okay, well, start our co-op. What are you all talking about? Well, this is the thing we break down the types of co-ops. So the consumer owned, the worker owned, small business owned, farmer producer owned, and then the multi stakeholder. Follow me there? Great. Now you see all of this, right? Now, when we move to the next slide, this is what everyone is founded on. Because there's a plethora, right? A variety of co-ops that exist and types of co-ops there is a structure that helps because anyone, which we hope any human can be able to create a co-op and together they are founded upon these seven cooperative principles that you see here. And we wanna make sure that you know in looking at these seven cooperative principles, again, this is where folks are being able to connect and have the structure to make a co-op happen. Greg? Yeah, and I think the reason these seven co-op principles are so important is just going back to all these levels of co-ops for a second is, you know, what does REI, which is a consumer-owned outdoor company, have to do with Organic Valley, which is a farmer-owned dairy company, right? They are really different. So we always talk about the fact that it's an ownership model. It's not a business model. So even though one might be consumer-owned, one might be farmer-owned, what they all have in common are the seven co-op principles that Shante talked about. So we have a lot of great speakers today. I don't want to take up all the time. So just briefly summarize some benefits and challenges of being a co-op. Um, what we like about it is it broadens decision-making of who has a voice. It can distribute earnings proportional to work, not just money. So if there is a profit at the end of the year, it would be distributed according to how much people contributed in time or how much they sold into a co-op, not just the investment they put in. It aligns incentives between owners and members. Um, I think on the negative side, Co-ops are harder to fundraise for, right? It's a more mysterious thing. You're not going to get VC funding in a co-op. The, fin the financing is going to look really different. It is a smaller ecosystem, uh, and that's part of what we're trying to solve at Start That Co-op, and I'm sure also what, what Rodney can support people on. Uh, we have a bunch of resources we'll put in the chat that people can check out. And finally, it's also more 
confusing to explain going back to the original stat that most people don't understand what a co-op is so we always try to teach people like rather than saying a co-op maybe you say we're a worker-owned company right just to make it really simple and obvious for people so uh we have a lot of great resources on our website we have a free lean co-op course and some other nice case studies we'll put in the chat and uh we will hand it back to other speakers